Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott in the old curiosity shop, feeling very pumpkin spicy. Pumpkin-y spicy today? Today's I am going to show you how I decorate my mantle for the autumn season and give you some ideas about maybe what you can do in your own home, even if you don't have a mantle. Then, normally, uh, I do enjoy changing around the things on my mantle, uh, but most of the time it stays pretty much the same. I don't know how well you can see, but back here um, in green, I have some glass made by Fenton. So these are two Fenton candlesticks that were very popular uh, in the 1920s. I also happen to have green candles in there. This was a popular mold, and you could get these candlesticks in various colors. I also have a small green, kind of like a green candy, candy uh, dish <laughs> that has the clock key in it. And this sits on top of a clock, like a decorative clock topper. Now, the photographs are my father's great-grandparents. They both died in the 1920s. I didn't know either one. But I've heard stories about them, and so I have their old photographs on either side of the clock. Because the clock actually came down in the family as well. That was in my great-grandparents' great house, and it was in my grandparents' house when I was a kid, and for a while it was in my parents' house, and now it's in my house. So it's been keeping us uh, on time for church since about, ooh, 1912 or so, somewhere around in there. Okay, let's get this green glass down, and I'm going to show you, basically, uh, what I'm going to use. I have some real simple candlesticks here made of glass. Now, these are painted... And this was very cheap glass made in the 1920s. You see it's clear on the inside and just cold painted. Lancaster might have made these, but other companies made this cheap fired on glass as well. I'm going to use those. I have a pair of, oh, are they little pheasant type things? It's just cheap Japanese pottery. I think it's Inesco ceramic rather and these probably are you know the 1950s 60s that kind of thing I've got a couple of those and just one little uh, ceramic there's nothing on the bottom of it I like the colors the brown and the orange again I don't know who made this but um, that's basically it so uh, let's go ahead and strip the mantle of what's up there now and make it look a little bit more seasonal here we go Okay, I don't know what was wrong with that haunted candle, but it must have fallen out of that candlestick holder about three times. Maybe my great-great-grandmother didn't like orange candles. Mm. I know what would be great, and I don't know where they are because I put them away somewhere, but my friends down in Florida last year sent me a whole bunch of candles, black and orange. And I think black candles would look much better than the orange. Let's just take a closer look and see what it looks like. Well, there it is. Quite a difference, huh? Listen, you don't have to do an MGM production. All I did was trade out the candlestick holders, 
the thing on top of the clock and added those pheasants and already we get a wonderful autumn look hey listen i'm not an interior designer i only took one art appreciation appreci appreciation i only took one art appreciation class in college but you don't have to overdo it and sometimes less is more i own a relatively small inner city apartment so i don't have room to store a lot of decorations and quite frankly, I don't like a lot of dust or bric-a-brac. So it really doesn't take a whole lot to jazz up your interior with some vintage items. But boy, the black candles I think would be great right there. Let me back up and let you see. Now I've got some other things that I can add. And I suppose, well, if we really wanted to make it look like a haunted house, we might do something like this. What do you think of that? Now I know that those of you who like it on the macabre side are thrilled with that. All right, now let's see. Maybe I could do some other things as well. Let's try something else. Okay, let's try it again. Now this time I'm going to have a slight variation. Instead of the glass candlesticks, I have a pair of pottery candlesticks. Now these are, uh, have a wonderful orange color and notice the black striped decoration on there. I notice the black striped decoration. These I believe were made in Czechoslovakia. Uh, they were indeed, and you see a lot of orange coming out of Czechoslovakia. These are going to be made sometime in between the two world wars. Then I have one other, uh, this is a larger bird. And this is, again, probably a Lefton or an Inesco piece. It's airbrushed, and it's just one of these wonderful fall-type colorful birds from the dollar store, really. Uh, just some uh, cheap, almost um, paper mache sort of gourds and pumpkins, that kind of thing. And then I've got some old-fashioned... Uh, garland that reminds me of decorations that would have been used many, 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 many years ago. Let's see what we can create with these. Now, don't pay any attention to my swags. I know they're not exactly perfect. Uh, and I didn't put any scotch tape or any thumbtacks or anything. It's just kind of hanging there. I might go back and fuss with that a little bit. But um, this cost, you know, almost nothing. These are just these little dollar store things. I think I ordered this offline maybe several years ago. 
The Czechoslovakian candlestick holders were just a flea market find. The candles were gifted to me. And this beautiful bird, oh, he came from somewhere, but I guess I was out thrifting one day when I found him. And then I also put a little swag up there. A little swagger. Is it swagger or swag? I think it's swag. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. Just gives a little bit of color for the autumn season. I think my great-great-grandparents would approve. There's great-great-grandmother. Oh, you can't see her very well. There she is. And uh, my great-great-grandfather right there. Who well, I'm happy to say I have a little bit more hair than he did at that time. Anyway, okay, so mantle number one or mantle number two. Now you notice I haven't really used too many of my vintage things and I didn't overdo it. Just the hint of the autumn season. Well, I suppose I'll wrap it up by just sharing a few of my vintage items that I like to decorate with at the Halloween season, the autumn season. And this isn't everything. I've got die cuts um, and, oh, other things I have not unpacked yet. But uh, let's just do a quick review of what I've got right here. This is a creepy gauze mask. And you saw these in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. I have photographs of my grandparents in things like this in the 50s. I've worn this and this is, I don't know, there's just something about this that is creepier than almost anything they make today. I can't really explain it, but very scary. And then here's a child's mask, a little paper mask that um, has got a lot of scotch tape on the back of it, but we can see here there were metal clips where the string came around the back. And this is something that looks like it probably dates to the 30s or 40s. A cat, just a little decor a little mask for a child. Um, the black cat, cat's paw uh, rubber heels container, and it still has the rubber heels down in there. This has sentimental value because that sat on a kitchen shelf in my paternal grandmother's house for my entire life. You know, the little shelves next to the kitchen sink, we've talked about those before. That was on her uh, kitchen shelf over the sink. And it sat there my entire lifetime and it looks like something based upon the mark on the bottom that was probably made in Japan in the 1950s. I don't remember what she kept on the inside, but it sat right there next to the sink. Everybody has to have a girly candle. Girly was the name of the company, as you know. I'm not assigning a gender identity to that candle. Salt and pepper shakers there with the, just an old owl. And when you decorate with these, you don't really even see the holes on the top and I have a Halloween horn which I will toot for you if you'd like to hear it okay that's a little tin horn the Sun is going down and I don't know how well you can see but isn't this really neat look at the witch and the skeleton and the bats the old house and a couple of cats. There's one, just a little made in Japan type thing. And here's a little clicker in the shape of a frog, almost sort of an Art Deco style. Hold your ears, I'm gonna start clicking. I warned you. This probably had powder in it for a woman's vanity, but it's deco and I love the colors, so I, I use that. I have one bookend here of a wise old owl, I guess in, um, in kind of a brass, uh, sort of a 1950s hard plastic pumpkin. Here's another cat here. This is actually an ashtray we can see right here. 
and it could lie flat as an ashtray, but you can also stand it up. And I like to stand him up. And then here's another horn, little party horn. Warning, I'm getting ready to toot. Hold your ears. Okay, that would be very annoying in the hands uh, of the wrong child, namely me. I'm sure I was very annoying if I had one of those as a child. And then a battery operated lantern for trick or treating. Can you imagine giving a glass owl to a child with batteries in it and allowing them to trick or treat? Now there's the switch right there. I need to put some new batteries in it, but this is glass and he does light up. And you can still find those. They're floating around. And I don't know, years ago, it's just not the Halloween season without these wonderful spice wafers. And many years ago, they had it, um, instead of it being in the box, they had a decorative tin, and I saved that tin. So I've had that tin myself 20 years. And then I've got other things too, uh, some various pumpkins here. So I have more to put out, and I actually forgot to show you this. That uh, my former college roommate found when we were junking down in, in North Carolina. He handed that to me and I said, ooh, 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 I love it. It's perfect for fall decorating, but I haven't done anything with it yet. I just wanted to share this with you. I'm getting some things out since it's only a few days away from Halloween. And I am wishing you the warmest wishes and all the pumpkin spice you can drink. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I had a good time. Hey, did you like mantle number one or number two? I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying wait for the cat. Happy weekend. So long for now.